Hey everybody, welcome back to Basic Level Gaming. And today uh, we are going to continue on with our series of learning to play chess. Um, again, we are still working on relatively basic concepts, just understanding how to look at the board, how to look at the pieces. Um, today we're focusing on how to make the best move. Um, and how sometimes the moves you see right up front aren't always the best moves um, and taking a piece isn't always the best option. Um, so we're going to jump in and take a look at that. I did just want to apologize for not having a video last Thursday. Um, when I made my video on Tuesday of last week, I totally spaced that Thursday was Thanksgiving. Um, so I was super busy with uh, the family and uh, doing dinner and stuff here. Um, so I do apologize for not letting you know ahead of time that we weren't going to have that video, but we are back on track today. So uh, thank you for joining us and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so you'll get our uh, alerts when we do upload our new videos. Um, thank you. All right, so today we're going to talk a little bit about finding the best move for you. I've um, got a couple of different things here that I'm going to work with uh, just to kind of demonstrate that what looks like the most obvious move is often not the move you actually want to take. So this board state here uh, and we're going to it's going to be Black's turn and we're going to try to figure out the best move for Black to make. Now, as you can see currently, um, the white bishop here is threatening both the black bishop and the queen. And it's relatively unprotected. I mean, there's, if, if you take it, nothing's going to take you back. So it seems like the best move is to take the bishop with either the queen, which would seem like a good option because it's going to line your queen and rook up together to be able to make an attack on the king or with the bishop um, coming down here and taking that just to be safe and you know leave your queen on this open file here however what if, if you make that move you're missing something that's extremely important whenever you're going to decide to take a take your turn and you're going to make a move you want to make sure you know what all of the pieces on the board can do next. You want to know what what is the the other team, the other player going to do on their very next turn if I do that. And in this case, you would have been overlooking this white bishop up here, which is on the big long diagonal here, and the white queen here. So yes, if I take that, my pieces are safe. However, with this white queen going down here, it's checkmate because I have no nothing I can do to take that white queen because the bishop is protecting it and there's nowhere for me to move my king. So I would have lost the game if I took that bishop. So I'm gonna take a minute here and I'm gonna see if you can find the right move to protect yourself here. So I'm just going to kind of pause for a second here. And keep in mind, uh, we've talked about it before, but you cannot put your king in check. So like this pawn here cannot move up there because then the bishop would be attacking the king. So, just something to keep in mind there. So, for me, the next thing that comes to mind is how can I protect this square right here that's in danger, this one right here, and still take a piece if I can, because you always want to take their pieces if you can, right? So what I would do, and let's see if this is what you came up with, is I would take this pawn and take the bishop. By doing that, you still get the bishop that you wanted, and this square here is protected because the 
the queen is now protecting it. So if they move this queen down here, you just take their queen. So you've managed to take the bishop still and protect yourself. And that's what you always want to keep an eye on is what are they going to do next? So um, let's take a look at another one here. So this one here, we've got a couple of things going on. And we've got the queen up here. This queen is attacking the bishop. And as of right now, if you look at it, the bishop is completely unprotected. There's nothing that could take that queen back. You've also got this knight here. It's attacking your knight. Um, now that one, we do have this pawn right here that could take it back. So it is protected, but it would still be a loss of a knight, which is not something I really want to have happen if I can help it. So let's see what would be best from here then. So what do we have that we're currently attacking? Um, we're attacking this bishop is attacking the pawn. It's also attacking this pawn. If we take this pawn, there's two different pieces that could take us back. So that's probably not something we want to do, not to mention that we leave that path for the white queen to take our other bishop, if it wanted to. So I don't think that's the way we want to go. Um, we also could just take the knight. But by doing that, not only is your knight still in danger because of the bishop up there on the left corner, but also the queen can still just take our bishop like it was going to before. So that doesn't really help. So do you see anything that you feel like would make a better move and either capture a piece or put us in a position of being protected or anything like that? So if you take this bishop and go up here, the king takes your bishop. So you still lose the bishop. But now if you look at the board, has anything changed? Are we in a better position at all? What would, um, what would the white team do next if we go like this? Let's take that knight. It really doesn't have anywhere that it can attack that it's not going to lose a piece. So it's definitely improved our position. We've gained a knight and a pawn for the cost of a bishop. So we're ahead. We came out ahead. And so that's also something we talked a little bit at the end of the last video about the value of the pieces. If you're getting more, val more points worth of pieces and not in a and you're in a decent position still or in a better position then you're ahead and that's that's a good way to go you just want to be careful of it because like when I took this knight here I could have just taken the queen and put the king in check but there were so many ways for the king to get out of that 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 wasn't really helpful so you just have to really keep an eye on the whole picture so let's take a look at another one here. So when we look at this board, um, we've got a few things going on. We've got the black queen could come down and attack our pawn. And it would put us in check. But it's not really something we're afraid of because there's, it's completely unprotected. So our king could just take it right back. So that's not really a fear. And the... Uh, Knight over here really isn't attacking anything that we need to be worried about. So this looks like a position where it's more like what can we do to attack? How can we gain pieces or material? Uh, or win the game, if that's possible as well. So do you see a move here that could force black to give us a piece? They'd have no other choice. Just giving you a moment to look at the board here. So 
So I'll give a little bit of a hint in case you haven't seen it yet. Um, we're going to work with the queen. That's going to be the piece that we're going to use. And there's a couple of different ways to go with it, but the, there's one way that will guarantee we come out ahead. So what that is, is if we take the white queen and bring it all the way back here and put the king in check, the king has to move. Remember, it can't stay in check. But then now where do we where do, where can we go from here? The biggest move, the best move that we have now isn't to keep chasing the king because then we're not protected. Instead, we can bring the queen down here and grab this knight. And we're we're making the game that much harder for black because now we still have a queen and a knight and black only has a queen and they've got a couple of pawns but their pawn set up too and we'll talk a little bit more about pawns um, probably next next video because we're going to talk about openings on the next video as well but their pawns are lined up together here and here so we have a lot more leverage to go with our pawns because they're spread out over five different spots not to mention between the queen and the knight we can get their pawns out of the way so we're really in a, a good position here. So that's and that's what your ultimate goal is, is to make sure you're in the best position to win the game going into what's called the end game. And we'll talk um that's a little bit uh, a couple of videos down the line still. So um we've got one more here. So let's look at this one. This one is and and we're playing black. We're always gonna be the one on the bottom for now while we're working on things. So we've got a couple of things to pay attention to. Um, first of all, we can take their bishop, wipe that out um, with either, we've got both our bishop that could do it, our knight that could do it, and actually our pawn could do it as well. So that's one option. We also could take the knight with the pawn. That's another option. And then really, I'm just kind of looking to see if I see any other I don't see any other ways we can attack so those are our options as far as attack goes now what do we need to watch out for defensively so we've got the knight can go down here and take our pawn as an option it could go right here as well neither one of those ultimately from the knight itself cause us any threat. So that's not really a concern because if it goes here we could just take it. If it goes here we take it. If it goes here it's it's not hurting us in any way. I mean it's attacking our rook a little bit but the bigger concern is this queen up here because if this queen comes down here and checks the king the king can't take the queen because that knight is pop protecting it. And the king can't move into the open square because the queen's protecting that. So it would be the end of the game. So that's the big thing that we need to make sure cannot happen. So if we want to make sure that the queen cannot come down here and be protected by the knight, how's the best way to do that? And we already talked about it as a possible move. And what that is, is if we use this knight, or this pawn, to take the knight, it does help. It guarantees that is an option. It guarantees that it cannot checkmate me there. However, as you can see, when the bishop moves down here, now we've got our rook in danger, and we don't want that, you know. So it's not the best move. It does stop checkmate though, so it does keep us from instantly losing the game. What else can we do? Do you see another option that would accomplish the same task? Taking the bishop wouldn't help us because there's still no way for us to stop checkmate. Another option that we could do is we could move this pawn up here, right? That, that would stop the queen from coming through. And if the queen takes the pawn, then the other pawn just takes it. So it does stop it. 
Still not our best move though. We still have one more thing that would make more sense and still save everything. And that is this knight can come over and take the bishop. And you're like, well, the knight and queen still have everything they need. But the problem is if the queen comes down here now, this knight can just jump over here and take her. So she can't come down and stop you. So that's the other thing you want to take a look at is not only what's the best piece to take, but what square do you need to protect the most? And it's important to move the to make the moves that you have to make more often than or as a higher priority than the moves you want to make. It's fun to jump out there and attack the king or attack the queen. But if you're just always paying attention to those attack moves, you're not protecting yourself. And that's something that you really need to pay attention to in order to give yourself the best chance at winning the game. And you can get lucky. You can go out there and you can play super aggressive and attack and there are lots of players that play that way. And you can win lots of games. But you're also going to lose a lot of games. And you're going to lose games that you could have won. You have to figure out how to play that balance. So I'm going to look at one last here board before we go. And the, the reason I want to look at this board is that we're in kind of a weird position as black here. If you look at where we're at, we're super crowded. Like almost all of our pieces are on the left side of the board. We've just got a couple of pawns here on the right and they're bunched up anyway. So that doesn't, that's not super helpful. So what we have to do is figure out how can we spread out our pieces so they're more active and still attack? Because we need to get some more pieces off of their side of the board. They've got two knights on us. And we've got our bishops, but the knights have so much flexibility that they're dangerous. So one of the obvious ways we could attack the knight, the first knight, is if we move the bishop right up here. The problem with that is, even if we take the knight, we're going to lose our bishop. At this point in the game, we don't want to trade if we don't have to. We need to keep our pieces. We don't have a lot of them. So what else could we do that's going to help make things look better? So another option that we could do, and it seems small, but we can move this pawn right up here and what that does is even if the pawn takes our pawn the bishop can come up and take that pawn and it makes it so that they're doubled up if they do keep both pawns and we're really still in that position we're not we're not sacrificing a whole lot and if they don't take the pawn which in I mean, they, they normally would. But if they don't, then we just take their pawn and keep moving up the board. Or they take us back there, but we still un, unbunch our pawns. So sometimes your goal isn't even to capture a big piece. It's just about improving your situation. So that's really what I wanted to talk about today is how to make those decisions on making the right move and looking to see what's next. Because you can play just this move, no matter what. I, I'm looking at what this move is, what's the best move this time. But if you're not looking at those moves that are coming up, you're doing yourself a, a disservice and you're putting yourself in a bad situation. So just something to keep in mind. Um, so definitely thank you for watching. And uh, hopefully you will tune in on Thursday and we will do a video. We're going to start looking at openings and how to start the game. And if we have time towards the end, just because a lot of openings is like putting the pawns in the right positions too. Um, especially the first move or two. 
if we have time, we're going to talk a little bit about pawns and doubling up pawns and how to keep from doing that because you lose a lot of utility if your pawns are bunched up together. So that's what we'll look at next time. Um, definitely, if you have any kind of concerns, questions, comments, feel like something I said was wrong, um, by all means, leave a comment down below. I'd love to hear from everybody, and we will see you on Thursday. Thank you.